now I'm talking to Nagan. Hi Nagan, thank Hi, you for coming in and nice. talking to me. Thank you. Now you're doing a presentation today on rectal bleeding. Correct. And can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk about? Sure, no worries. Um, so rectal bleeding is a very common presentation as we all know um, in the front line in the general practice and a lot of patients can present with minor um, rectal bleeding which can be attributed to uh, benign causes but obviously New Zealand in one of the leading countries in the world with colorectal cancer we need to be able to identify what are the symptoms that are red flags that uh, we need to be aware of that necessitate an urgent colorectal surgical review. Yeah. So that's going to be the focus of my talk today. Okay. Um, with regards to common causes of rectal bleeding, um, obviously there are the big things, the big topics, the fissures, um, the hemorrhoids, but even then they can be sometimes tricky to manage yeah. and um, I'll be focusing on some red flags to look out for um, in terms of atypical fissures that need to be um, referred in um, acutely, um, atypical fissures that need to be um, involved with a colorectal surgeon opinion and um, kind of new technologies um, that we can use um, for hemorrhoid treatments. Mm. So the whole, um, I think everyone worries about colorectal cancer, it's obviously a huge thing in New Zealand. Um, what are your sort of key points around that for people? I guess identifying the key symptoms. So rectal bleeding though one of the symptoms, uh, we need to make sure we understand what are the other issues that kind of ring that red alarm bell in our heads to say, you know what, we need to refer this patient urgently for a colonoscopy. So we're looking for things like unintentional weight loss, yeah. a change in bowel habit, and the, the key point is looking at a six week change. So if your bowel habits change a week that's okay but if it's six weeks that's not okay we yeah. need to know about that if you can feel an abdominal mass or if the patient reports abdominal pain with an iron deficiency anemia confirmed on blood tests and um, obviously rectal bleeding then we need to know about that um, you talk about so we often have patients who have an iron deficiency but no anemia associated but yet if they have the other symptoms do you still use that as a red flag is that something that you kind of think about you know? yep so essentially um, if you look at the uh, New Zealand guidelines for colonoscopies um, a patient who has an unexplained rectal bleeding uh, or, will, or no rectal bleeding but an unexplained iron deficiency anemia yeah. and you've excluded all benign causes need to be referred for at least a colonoscopy yeah. but obviously that's that's not going to be done within a two-week span. We'd yeah. look at it maybe in a six-week time period. Okay. And the other causes, so you mentioned hemorrhoids briefly. I think they are um, something that, that is pretty common in Correct. primary care and are not always managed well. Can you give us some tips? Yep, so obviously I think the GPs are doing a fabulous job with managing hemorrhoids in the first instance. So dietary modification, lifestyle changes, um, we always say don't sit on the toilet for too long, don't sit there reading Women's yeah. Weekly magazine because that <laughs> prolongs straining upon defecation. Yeah. You want to ensure that they drink um, well and tea and coffee doesn't count but you have to make sure they drink adequate hydration. Mm. Stool softeners is quite important as well and there are topical treatments such as proctocidal, ultraproct and um, anisole that can be used to help treat those issues. Mm. I guess the key thing to be aware of is that Internal hemorrhoids that are constantly bleeding, causing trouble, need to be referred in for consideration of banding, mm. sclerotherapy, and sometimes surgery. And those are the cases that we're interested in. I'll be talking about all of those things a bit more today in our talk. And the urgent referrals for these kind of things, um, we, you know, we, what should we be doing? When should we be sending them in other than the patient who really is in obvious severe pain? For sure. So I always say treat them at least for six weeks with the conservative approach we've just discussed. If they're still symptomatic after six weeks, send a referral yeah. into um, the colorectal surgery um, unit. If patients, however, have um, pain that's ongoing, they are bleeding quite a lot, yeah. um, they have evidence of necrosis or gangrene of yeah. their hemorrhoids, we need to know about that sooner than later. So yeah. just give us a call. Okay, brilliant. Any other key messages you'd like to get across before you start your talk today? I guess the take home message, which I say to basically GPs, registrars, medical students, if you don't put your finger in it, you put your foot in it. <laughs> Meaning don't ever forget a rectal examination because we don't want to have that one colorectal cancer missed because the PR exam wasn't done. Yeah. So for me, Probably that's the most important take-home message. Great. Thank you, Nagan. I really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.